get a looking for better fuel economy? Who isn't? In this video, I want to talk about over a dozen different tips and tricks to get that better fuel economy out of your four-wheel drive. Whether you're towing a camper trailer or a caravan, why make a difference? Follow some of these and I'm sure you'll be thrilled. Okay, let's go. Now, as much as I hate wearing sunglasses because the eyes are the windows of the soul, it is so bright here. On a recent video, I made a comment about having your electrical cable wrapped around the uh, gas cylinder for tidiness. Wrong. Please don't do this. In fact, apparently you don't even wrap it up and have it plugged in because it can uh, dissipate some heat. So what they suggested, so a couple of electricians who contacted me, is you make it in a snake formation like that. So no particular part of the cable is crossed over. Okay, let's open this can. First of all, a lot of people, it's a delicate topic. So when you're asking people on the road, oh, what sort of fuel consumption do you get? You get all sorts of mixed reactions. Some people don't want to talk about it. Some people say, don't really make, I don't really uh, take any notice. I just drive, I just fill up when I need to. Others will give you an inaccurate figure just because they feel as though they should be getting a better fuel consumption and it feels better if they say, oh, I'm getting 14 litres per hundred. Really? A V8? Anyhow, one of the things is a lot of people, when they'll give you a fuel consumption, because I'd like to know this, for me, fuel consumption is pretty big on the list. What they'll do is they'll say, they'll read off what's on, whatever is on the um, dashboard. In other words, uh, lots of the modern cars these days have got you little computer and it says you're getting 14 litres or 16 litres or 18 litres per 100 and it just comes up on the dashboard because you just click through and there's the reading. However, my belief is that's just basically there to make you feel warm and cosy. I don't think that's very accurate. My preference to that would be to use something like Fuel Map, which I talked about in an earlier episode. Go in, you uh, put in how many litres, you put out how much money you've spent and uh, the rate and the cost of the actual fuel at the time it calculates it all for you and then it sits in the history so at any point in time you could say oh three months ago what sort of fuel consumption i was getting well here we go this is probably the most controversial uh, topics to discuss tire pressures now tire pressure will definitely make a difference on your fuel consumption if it's overinflated Apart from the fuel consumption, it'll also affect the wear on the tyres. If it's underinflated, the same thing. You can have them way too crazy. I've met people with Prados like this. We've got it 65 and 70. They're driving down the highway. Now, as I say, I don't want to say what's the right pressure, but it'll definitely make a difference. So try and get or definitely get those tyre pressures right. As we get on in life, we all uh, want to shed a bit of weight. This is the time you need to shed weight on your car. Now, uh, if you're just driving around town preparing to go on your long trip, before that period, like if it's a month or a couple of months or six months and you get all excited and you put your max tracks up on the roof rack and you put your water bottles and your fuel bottles and all the things that are very exciting, oh, I'm almost ready to go in six to nine months time, take them off. That will definitely affect your fuel consumption. Now, with me, it's a little bit different because I'm actually on the road, so I need my max tracks. But anyway, try and keep all the junk off the roof unless you absolutely need it. So as I say, I need the max tracks uh, and I've got a water bottle up there, so I need that. In, in an ideal situation, don't even have a roof rack. That would make a big difference. As I say, any opportunity in the car or the caravan, Dump the, dump the heavy things, get rid of them, give them away, sell them, whatever has got to be done. Just get rid of that weight, less weight, and the less wind resistance, better fuel consumption. The 
a good idea to have a uh, wheel alignment and a wheel balance. Now that will make a difference of the car, whether it's how it's tracking, you don't want it to be crapping down the road in a severe situation. Also your tyres are going to wear, but it will definitely affect your fuel consumption. So pop in there and uh, as I say, have it done. It doesn't cost much, it's about $70 generally. And uh, it'll make a difference. Also make a difference when you're literally driving down the road because the car will just drive nice and smooth. Otherwise, if it's out of balance or if it's the front end's out or any of it's out, the car might, as you're holding it, may wander off the road. Or um, again, almost definitely, if it's all out badly, it'll affect your fuel consumption. And that's what we're talking about today. <laughs> oh, I swear with this wind, I'm gonna lose my wig. Have you seen these before? They're a sock. They fit over your snorkel and they basically filter some of the dust and dirt on a uh, dusty or dirty track. Really good idea. They just slip over like that. Obviously they've got to be go on with some sort of elastic or I usually put a couple of uh, cable ties. Now they're a great idea and having clean air getting into the engine is going to make a difference to fuel consumption. The other thing is because you need it clean if you do a few long trips, it's a good idea to take them off and wash them. Now you can wash them in petrol, I'm pretty sure. <laughs> Please make your comments if I'm wrong. Wash them in petrol or uh, something similar to that. And if they're nice and clean, then when they're going through the filter, coming down into uh, the engine, they will make the engine clean and run smooth and save some fuel. Good idea. I better take it off before I drive down the road. <laughs> flies off in the sunset. Now if you're four wheel driver like me and you've given the opportunity, you'll love to go out and have a dirty weekend. Take the car out, take it through some puddles, take it through some mud without destroying the environment. Just have a four wheel driving good time. And with that, it's important when you get back, be, as soon as you can, get back and wash the car. And it's not just the body. Yeah, it's nice to have a nice, clean, shiny four-wheel drive, but it's probably more important to clean underneath, especially the wheels and uh, around the tyres and the undercarriage. Because what can happen is it doesn't sound like very much, but uh, mud can actually sit on the tyres and sit on the wheels. First of all, it might throw the wheels out of balance if it's severe, and I've had that happen. The other thing is um, it can uh, slow components down, the brakes, do all sorts of things. So. Definitely have a really good wash of your four-wheel drive if you're out and about having a bit of a splash in the mud. Now one thing modern cars has given us is air conditioning. And we don't even think about whether it's turning it on, turning it off. Some people leave it on all the time. If you want to be conscious of the fuel consumption, yeah, be comfortable. If it's 42 degrees outside, you definitely don't want to, oh no, I'm saving fuel. I'm definitely not turning on the air conditioning. Use it for comfort. But if you use it on all the time, and a lot of time it's up full, it will definitely make a difference on your fuel consumption. And allegedly up to about 10%. So what you could think about doing is, yeah, look, have it on a fair bit of the time. And on those sort of mild days when it's not that hot, or uh, just whenever suits you, you know what, I'm just going to turn the air conditioning off. Depending whether you're travelling with one, uh, a couple or the whole family, you might hear the kids at the back, oh, it's so hot in here, I think I'm going to melt. Now I know some people might be saying, oh look, Paul, you're splitting hairs, but we're just trying to define making any change in your fuel consumption. When you go and fill up, uh, most people do this anyway, when you're filling up the fuel in the in the car just do it to the first click some people say oh no first click a little bit more a little bit more a little bit more oh it's overflowing good now it's full the reason you should only do it to the first click is first of all it's always a nice accurate calculation for each time you always fill it up to one click then you'll know how much fuel you've used in a particular distance a particular tank and the other thing is there's a thing called an overflow and you may lose you may lose fuel out of the overflow and you also may lose fuel out of evaporation. <laughs> and I know that's pretty small, but, ah, March fly. I know that's pretty small, but uh, just that little bit might make a difference to you. Hey, it's definitely not for me, 
to be telling you what speed to drive at. However, the difference between driving at 80 to 85 and 100 to 110, if you're down the 80, 85 kilometer an hour, you will get the best economy. And we could be looking at about 10% difference in the fuel economy. So it's definitely worth consideration. And not only that, if you were going about 80, 85 kilometers an hour, it's really pretty casual and you get lots of opportunities to see the uh, countryside, which is great. Now, I may be stating the obvious, but this beast has already done a fair bit of work and it has to do even more. So if you're preparing for a long trip, make certain you service the car. Let's check it out. If you don't know anything about cars or engines or you don't want to service it yourself, no problems, but make certain it's serviced. If you service it fairly regularly, the diesel you're supposed to do either 10 or 20,000 kilometres, I believe. <laughs> make it common if I'm wrong. And also, if you're doing your own servicing and popping your own oil in, make certain it's the right oil for the right job. Always a good idea to have a spare air cleaner on your trip, and as well as that, to take off the air cleaner and just check out how dirty it is. So this shot is not set up. It might be a little bit dusty in there, in which case I too will need to clean it. It's all a little bit different on different cars. Oh, looks all right. Yeah, you see, it's a little bit dirty. This particular one, uh, when I bought it, it came with this mesh on it, and I thought it was a mistake. I was going to rip it off, but in hindsight, I'm glad it's picked up a few bugs. And this is the uh, filter that goes into the air box that goes into the engine, so we want it as clean as possible. So I'll give it a bit of a <laughs> dust out. Wind's going this way, so if I dust it that way, it should go behind the car. No. And there's some stuff in there I'll get out as well. What you probably should do, and I should do as well, is get a little vacuum cleaner in there. Clean it out. Back in she goes. So before you go on a long journey, or any journey really, but uh, certainly if you're towing a caravan, make certain you check all the brakes. Brakes on the car and brakes on the trailer or the caravan. Because if the, uh, even if the electronic brakes are giving a wrong signal, for instance, out the back there, or you've got a problem, then what can happen is the uh, brakes can actually be holding you back. And with that drag, you're using up more fuel because the engine's got to work harder. Now when you're scooting along the highway, it's really a good idea not to have the cruise control on all the time. For instance, if the road is quite hilly, then uh, I'd be turning off the cruise control. You'll get better fuel consumption. Because what happens is, well you know, the uh, car tries to maintain the speed that you've preset. So going up a hill, it's going to, the revs will go up on the taco and you'll be, end up using more fuel. And equally, when it's going down a hill, it says, oh, you only want to go a certain speed. So again, it would retard the engine and use up more fuel. And never drive, never <laughs> drive your uh, car with cruise control in the wet. Very dangerous. Hey, it's definitely not for me to be telling you what speed to drive at. However, the difference between driving at 80 to 85 and 100 to 110, if you're down the 80, 85 kilometre an hour, you will get the best economy. And we could be looking at about 10% difference in the fuel economy, so it's definitely worth consideration. And not only that, if you were going about 80, 85 kilometres an hour, it's really pretty casual and you get lots of opportunities to see the uh, countryside, which is great. Another slightly controversial question. Do you need bar work? And if you need it, do you need all of this? Now I'm doing a big trip 
and uh, there will definitely be times when I'll be on dirt roads and I could be exposed to stray sheep, goats, camels, horses, uh, rabbits, kangaroos, emus. So I want to give the car and my life as much protection as possible, so I've gone a bit crazy. But realistically, these things, they are so heavy. Uh, a friend of mine gave me a hand to put this on and we had to use like a block and tackle. So uh, yeah, they're really heavy. So another alternative, if you do need to put bar work on and you're not too much of a uh, four by four snob, you might want to go aluminium because again, that's less weight. And this uh, side bar, realistically, you'd have to be doing some pretty serious or serious four wheel driving or really want to look cool to have that. So uh, that's worth a consideration, the type of bar work you have. Because the heavier it is, the harder the engine works, the more fuel you'll use. This one, guys, I want to apologise straight up because I'm sure that the lady of the house is going to say, I told you so. If you're preparing for your trip and you're just about to, uh, you're planning it and everything, and you've still got three months, six months, or even a year ahead, it's great driving around town with these on. You really look as though you belong to the club. But with the, all of these things on your roof rack, and even your roof rack, unless you use it a lot, or for work, it's a lot of weight up there, and it's going to use up a lot of fuel before your trip. So this is fuel consumption before you actually go. So get all that gear off when you're about a week or two weeks before heading off, Put it all up and you can really start getting the feeling, get into the zone of the big trip. Well, here it is, a wrap up on how to save money and use less fuel when four wheel driving or four wheel driving and towing a caravan or camper. Hope you enjoyed it. Hope it was not too controversial. Please flood the comments below. And if you liked it, and if you haven't already subscribed, that would be great if you did. And until next time, this is Paul Will Drive, signing off.